<laughs> Round two, fight. <laughs> Somebody uh, got an impromptu um, uh, live of, of us for two seconds. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Congratulations on that, folks. You are the daily double winner. <laughs> um, hello, everyone. Uh, the show is not live today. We are pre-recorded because life. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So this is going to be on uh, Saturday, this Saturday, June 19th, which is Juneteenth. Uh -huh. Congratulations. If you don't know what Juneteenth is, go look it up. I'm not I'm not being paid to um, ed educate you. Google is free. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> I, I don't have your, I don't think either of us has the energy to teach people about Juneteenth. Yeah. Um, you know, what have you. But we're, we're still going to have some fun today. Let's get these introductions out of the way, shall we? The man across from me, uh, he is a cinema CEO. He is a cinema god. He is also one half of the tag team fans of the world, along with Lady Mina. Last week, they had an incredible episode where it was the takeover, the AMC A-listers takeover. Welcome to the A-list. This gentleman is Michael Williams. What's up, yo? And myself, I am, uh, I am um, the hungriest man in the room. I'm also the tiredest man in the room right now. Um, we do. This is going to be the most chill, low energy show you've ever seen from us. Yeah, my God. We're not high. We're just living this adult life. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I am uh, the hungry bleak Antonio Pomares, and this is the Fandom Initiative. As always, you're welcome. So, as I said, this is a pre-recorded episode. Uh, we wanted to celebrate Black folk in entertainment because we've been doing this thing for a long time. The last couple of years. There's been a lot um, uh, of content from us. Um, that 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 premium content, brother. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Whether it's audio like us, mm -hmm. but we also have our video, obviously, as you can see, from TV shows to novels to comics to movies to streaming services to people behind the scenes as well. There have been a lot of moves happening these last couple of years, especially in this year of uh, pandemic and social distancing and people finally really embracing the technology of things. Yes. Um, I mean, I, 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 I love it. Like sometimes I'll I, like, we'll like say, man, there's so much content out there. It's too much. It's too much. Too much. Can't take it. Can't take it. Have, have you seen this? No, but did you read this? No, but did you watch this? No, did you play this? No. I, yeah. But what have been some of your favorite things? <laughs> Come out, brother. What it's, 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 it's the proverbial <laughs> double-edged sword. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, I would rather have it this way. Yes. Than searching and looking and having to go in like a basement and getting a, a, a VCR like tape of, or laser disc of something that you saw that someone's like, look, check this out, man. This is really cool. You know? Um, what have been some of your your wonderful black entertainment moments of this past year. Because mm. you are much more up on uh, TV and movies than I am. Yeah. Um, you will finish something. I will watch it and then... No, no. Well, not always, brother. Well, I don't well, always well, finish stuff. What? <laughs> you go further than I do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know, brother. Um... Mm, let me let me let me start off talking about something that I actually me and I actually finished this weekend, which yes. is uh, <laughs> Lupin on Netflix. Oh, yeah, do I have not started yet yet, but I've heard the most incredible things about yes. that. Yes, um, good show, a really good show. Although I kind of thought towards the end. Yeah, I don't know if it lost some steam for me, and and it wasn't that the story didn't end the way that it should have. Mm. I think it was just some of the choices in disguise got kind of mm. like loopy. Like, uh, no, pun no intended. that wouldn't work. Yes, yeah, so I'm like, no, nah, that wouldn't work. <laughs> <laughs> but um. For the most part, I, I thought Lupin was a really good show. Um, no, is this 
a second season or is it the second part of the first season? Because I know Net- this, Netflix does that sometimes. Yeah, this is the second part of the first season. So I don't know if there's okay, going okay. to be another season. I mean, it. I, I guess there could be. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but if there isn't, this kind of ends sort of as a self-contained thing. Oh, okay. You like know what I mean? Like, yeah, sort of. Oh, all yeah, right, all right. Yeah. I mean, like, they leave it they give themselves a wiggle room to do another season if they want to, but mm-hmm. if they choose not to, I don't think you'll feel cheated by watching this entire thing. Ten episodes. All right, cool. Yeah, because I, I, I like a limited series, and those have been we, we've seen more of that being prevalent lately too. Yeah, um, like l- limited series, which again I enjoy because I don't like long ass seasons. So if you give me short season or a, or a limited series run, um, or a um. A um, series event or an event mm-hmm. series, mm-hmm. as a Disney has, um, as as a give, <laughs> g- giving us that term. Yes, I'm cool for it. And, and so it's, it's ten episodes. Ten episodes, yes. All right, cool. Yeah, the, I've heard so many great things about it, and I'm and I know that it's. I think it's somewhat based on the legend of like that thief. Mm-hmm. So that kind of interests me, and the fact that I wait, a minute, I've seen him before in, in something else or a couple yeah. of things I want to say. He is. He was, he in, was the guy from the. Movie. He played Bishop. Bishop. Oh, sh- yeah. Mm-hmm. That very small role that Bishop had in one of those movies where he basically doesn't speak at all. You see him, you know who he is. Yes. But he doesn't speak. Yeah, <laughs> I totally you, forgot that. And all you really see him is fighting sentinels in the background, but yeah. He was also in that. The uh, the TV remake of Taxi, wasn't he? I believe so. Yes. Where where he played the taxi driver to um oh for, forgetting the actress's name. This was pre Supergirl. Mm. But after not another teen movie, I can't remember her name though. Mm. I, I want to say it, it was that actress. I. Names are going to escape me through that with the whole show. I'm just going to let you all know right now. Okay. Um. But yeah, that that show looks incredible. And again, if it's limited series, I'm cool with that. I have no issue with that at all because I like that. Um, one of the things that really caught me as far as like content the last couple of years, I've, I've been trying to get more into horror movies. Mm-hmm. Um. And like maybe like not necessarily franchise horror movies but just one off it's just like a self-contained one that got me is uh his house yes i still need to watch that so that was see folks that this is what we're talking about the hit and the miss the hit and the miss the hit and the miss like we're all like we're we're, we're both working on two opposite sides of the same <laughs> fandom it yeah. was just so uh, yeah it it just i loved it because it legitimately in the first five minutes, it legitimately gave me a scare. I was watching it about eleven o'clock at night, totally mm-hmm. dark, no mm-hmm. lights, blinds closed, everything like mm-hmm. it, like dark. Only light was from the TV and from my phone. Within the first five minutes, I said, "Nope, okay, turn this off. Watch something else. Nope, mm-hmm. we're 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 gonna watch this in the light of day right. because it was something that caught me so off guard. Um, but it was so be- beautifully well done, um, and two people who later on ended up getting really really great choice roles um in other projects and an actor that we know very much from a blue box that goes around uh time and space mm-hmm. we in this movie we get <clears throat> excuse me we get um when me i want to make sure i'm pronouncing her name properly because she is so awesome and we're getting more of her in loki which is oh, awesome. Yeah, yeah. Which, yeah. Um, Womni Mosaku. Uh-huh. Uh, we're getting her in this. Uh, she's just, oh my God. After Lovecraft Country, it just, it blew. I love the fact that Lovecraft, Lovecraft Country propelled her out there more. Uh-huh. And just, it's usually the opposite, which is funny. It's usually like something like low key. It's usually a Disney movie will usually propel you. Uh-huh. Or rejuvenate your career and bring you right. back. Um, right. Robert Downey Jr. We saw this. 
not that he was out, but he wasn't there. Yeah. And then all of a sudden he came back. Um, but this movie is just amazing. I'm trying to look up the actor's name, uh, who was also in the movie because it just, it, yeah, it just hits for me. It's just, uh, it was, oh, hope I'm pronouncing his name per- correctly. Uh, Sope Dirisu, mm-hmm. who later on ended up being cast in uh, AMC's um, Gangs of London. Yes, yes, yes. Which yes. was out of nowhere. That that show is just yeah. I have one episode left to watch, and that's the, the finale. We can talk about that too because his role in there is just awesome. I and the way it's. As Amina says, the most violent show she's ever seen on TV. Oh, Ooh. <laughs> but the violence came out of nowhere, though, didn't it? It yes. was everything was chill, and all of a sudden that bar, mm-hmm. I was like, "Wait, mm-hmm. what?" But I had forgotten that the dude who did the raid and the raid two mm-hmm. had a hand in this, and you can see that that style in the fighting, which is mm-hmm. beautiful. I, I love it. Um, but his house also stars Matt Smith, who is most widely known as the, the Doctor. He's Yes. Number 11. Mm-hmm. Actually, number 12, if you know, you know, the war doctor. But that movie was so great. It's about these two African refugees who end up getting a house um, uh, in London. Or maybe I should say England. So I'm not sure about geography. I'm going to be honest with you. I'll say England. Mm. And they start seeing specters and ghosts around the house. And you're not sure if it's them having um, these delusions or if it's actually haunted or if it's maybe the guy who got them the house who who was played by Matt Smith. There's a twist at the end that you almost see coming, but you don't. And then it drops and you're like, oh my God. I love this because it wasn't, let me say this the proper way. Let me make sure that this isn't taken it in the wrong way. It wasn't. It was a supernatural horror thriller, where the um, the evil, the big bad, was not something white based. It wasn't based on whiteness. Okay. A lot of times, even when the villain, the antagonist, the big bad in a movie or series is white, it almost still makes this project that is predominantly black or, or people of color, it makes it still white centric. Mm-hmm. Where this, it was about our culture, our mythology, our, our our roots. So that's why I love this even more. It wasn't the fact that it, at the end, it was like, you know, it was like, you know, some white woman or, or white man going, we almost got them. Maybe the next family will be like, no, it wasn't that. Mm-hmm. It takes twists and turns. They both, it's almost like two separate movies in a sense too, because you see his perspective and her perspective. Well, actually three, and then you see their perspectives together. (coughs) But I love the fact that it was about us and he was just like a background. Like he's like an out, like he's like trying to look on the inside, trying to see like, like on on the outside looking in and see what's going on. But it was, like I said, it's maybe about two hours or maybe a little less. Great horror movie. So glad to see that propel Wumi to low key and other projects. Um, you know what? I think because they keep showing it on Netflix whenever I scroll past NCIS, she was on an episode of MCIS as well. Oh, really? Yeah. And when I saw the clip, I was like, wait, is that? And I was like, oh my God, that's awesome. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> it's that's always a cool moment when you see somebody that you love now and you're like, I didn't know. Oh my God. Wow. Yeah. So yeah. Um, but again, yeah, um, gangs of London, which is beautifully done. Shot. Mina's not wrong. <laughs> Mina's <laughs> definitely not wrong. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that show is great because it shows gangs of London, which is the name of the show. But it also has a varied cast, a realistic cast, a diverse cast, an inclusive cast, uh-huh. where you'll have families from all over the world co- that are, you know, part of the the London crime scene and working together, and you're getting all shades, all colors, accents. It's beautiful, 
and you get our lead. Um, yeah, man, I just, I, yeah. Shout out to, uh, to Robert Jeffrey for, for, I don't, I, I forgot if it was on Facebook or it was in a chat where he was like, yo, this show is crazy. And I was like, all right, man, let me get this AMC plus yeah. for, for free real quick. I was like, let me see what Robert talked about. I watched it and I was like, dude, yes. Uh, Thoughts. Concerns. <laughs> Quandaries. How high was that bar tab after my man was done? Yeah. yeah. It's really, really, it's a really good show. Like, mm. really well done and you know, I don't feel like the violence is just there to be there. I think it's kind of, I don't know. Like in, when, what, when you what, watch. What, like you a, would, what you would think would be going on with people of this ilk. Yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? But in a very artistic, beautiful way, though, because some of those scenes <laughs> yeah. are like just the, yeah. the fights are crazy. Yeah, yeah. But it fits with if you've watched any like um London gangster movies and stuff like that, it fits. <clears throat> yeah, I mean it was good to see it was good to see the guy that plays uh Ed Dumani on that show because I remember him from a show that was on HBO called the uh, Number One Ladies Detective Agency. Oh my god, yeah, Jill Scott, yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. HBO Max to the rescue. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, right, right. Oh, that man. that was a show the guy that should have had another season for for sure. No more ways of the Discovery Agency was a good show. I don't care what anybody says. I don't know was why it, it only one got or one two season. seasons. Oh, I think it, it only got one. one. I think it only got one. Yeah. And it was uh Jill Scott was was lead. Yeah. That that show it caught me. I think it, it was before my mind would start opening up to things really because I was like, yeah. "Wait, is this Joe Scott in in Africa uh, as a detective?" And I was like, oh, "This is kind of cool," uh, but I was yeah. never around to watch it, so I was always missing it. Then I would forget about it. Yeah, and then what's her name is the supporting character on that show, and she's really good in it. Uh, Anika Noni Rose. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah. Or did you, it, so it's it amazing how some shows can slip through the cracks. Yeah, it wasn't that they didn't have the talent for that show. They definitely had good talent on that show. Mm -hmm. I just think that people just weren't watching it or they weren't feeling it for whatever reason. Maybe it was ahead of its time. You know, like if that show would come on now, that show would probably be a hit. Mm -hmm. You know There's, what I mean? It's, it's funny how our shows are always ahead of their time. Yeah. They're, they're, they're always ahead of their time. They're yeah. always like... Exactly, exactly. Look at Mantis. Mantis was ahead of his time. Well, Mantis also wait, got man, screwed over in mm -hmm. ways because they was like, "Wait, it, this is this is this is too political. We need to mm. we need to bring some weird alien shit in here." Mm. You know, <laughs> yeah, exactly. because it couldn't be about you know just fighting <laughs> exactly. for your neighborhood and trying to bring peace. We mm. our our shows are always ahead of their time. They're always too forward. Thing. I don't know how this works out. This is and then ten years later, you remember what I liked. Mm -hmm. This year, and, and you're like, yeah, I like it too. And you find out everybody watched it, but the network was like, mm -hmm. I don't understand. But it's always, but then you have to look at who is sitting in that network chair at the time. Exactly. They're probably still sitting in the same network chair now, just <laughs> older. <laughs> exactly. Or they were fired and somebody just replaced them who had the same mental. Exactly. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah. I'm just saying, guys. Yeah. 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 You know. Sometimes a time slot don't matter when you have a streaming service. You can, you can <laughs> yeah. do whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. precisely. <laughs> you don't rule Sundays like you used to. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying. Uh, yeah, it is. Shows. Oh my God, yeah. Damn. Now I'm thinking about Mantis. Sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Think about it. Carl Lumley never ceases to to just bring it. He never. Mm -hmm. Dude brings it in his sleep. He's he's pouring his milk for like his cereal. Mm -hmm. First of all, he probably uses almond milk or, or oat milk because he's mm -hmm. just that dude. Mm -hmm. And he and yeah, he just damn. Even when it's a small part, he still just gives you this. Yeah. Fuck. Need to give him more. Just the dude is just there. Yeah. But yeah. 
still um talking about uh because i, I want to ask you about an episode of that did you said you have one one episode left of gangs of london yeah the the last episode from the first season yeah there's a scene where it's a long take uh -huh. in the dining room uh -huh. when someone's been shot i watched that scene about 10 times uh -huh. Because it was so long, it was done so well. It shows everybody's perspective, everything. I was like, I was like, oh my! And it, I, I wish I had been in like the room when it was shot. No pun intended. <clears throat> because I was like, like I honestly got chills. I'm like, how cool was it at the end of that take when they were all like, we got it, nailed it, done. Yeah, yeah. That's a wrap. And but again, it's such a. It's such a different scene because you go from that bar scene where that fight is just out of nowhere. I was like, what the? F I just wanted a blue moon. I didn't know all this was going to happen. <laughs> I came in, I, I, I just came for a blue moon. I know all this was going to happen. To this scene, so well done, so well shot, and made you feel all these different emotions and intricate. It, and, but the show goes all over with it revenge um uh, and and it takes a bit from a lot of the the genre that it's that it's in um uh um and internal affairs slash the departed uh -huh. um uh layer cake uh -huh. um basically any damn london gangster movie and there are some of them they're beautiful ones god there they, i'll i'll take any gangst i'll take any london gangster movie over any um uh good fellas or i'll i'll honestly take casino well maybe not casino because casino is really good uh -huh. but yeah good fellows definitely the irishman god damn it that 90 hour movie but to we go to let's talk about loki for a moment because we do get to see this was an important show because of two things in particular that got me one uh -huh. we got two black women as uh -huh. the in the forefront of this series and two black women who are not um who are not um like new to us uh -huh. again one we get uh from lovecraft country uh -huh. His house, uh -huh. but then we also get a particular actress from a movie that we went to see uh -huh. in New York. Yes, uh, which I, I've seen it like ten times. Still, I'm gonna be honest with you, just that movie because it just it's just a different take uh -huh. on uh, the actress. Let me make sure I'm saying her name properly because I love her name and it's awesome. Gugu Mbatha Ra. Is it Google? I say Juju, so I'm probably Juju? wrong. I don't know. I honestly don't know, brother. <laughs> well, you know what? When she's on the show, we'll know. Exactly. When she's on the show, we'll know. We I get her. Don't know. Yeah. And they're both in leadership um, authority roles. Yes. Second thing that got me is because we got a plus-size black woman in a prominent lead on an MCU Disney Plus series. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Tom Hillison, great, obviously. <laughs> um, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, Luke Wilson. No, 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 not Luke. Owen, Owen. thank you. Owen Wilson. Uh. Yeah, do, doing Owen things, and I like him in the MCU. Hey, That's it, pretty crazy. It, him and him and him and his brother both are working now. Yeah, it, it like, but his, his his humor fits it, and you wouldn't think his humor would fit it, but it fits in this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I yeah. think it's because of maybe it's with Loki. I don't know, but you got me with these two women in the forefront. Yeah, standing there in charge. Yeah. And when she hit him with that stick, and she was like, "Well, it's good." What is it? One sixteenth normal time, but you're feeling it uh, all real in real time. Uh -huh. <laughs> and the way his face was moving, I was like, "Yeah, like, yeah, Loki run it, stay, give me some more of this." Loki stay getting done. 
<laughs> Stay getting done. Ooh. <laughs> She rocked him with that stick hard. I know, she, did, I know. she took him like I know. <laughs> she 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 cracked him. <laughs> she I love that she plays these and she's I want to say English. Uh, yes, I believe she English, English, right? Uh-huh. She has played a woman from down south. Uh-huh. She's played an African refugee. Uh-huh. And now she is playing an officer. In a time variance uh, association, time variance uh, authority, authority, yeah, authority, authority thing, yeah. I love it. She's got range. Yes. That's not a joke. <laughs> like I normally say for somebody, this guy. I'm saying, <laughs> but it was. It's cool to see that propel, and then this, like most Disney stuff, will propel her e- even further. Uh-huh. I just I. And and we're gonna get her for how many how many episodes? Is this eight? I'm not sure. I think so. Oh wait a minute! The new episode should be out today. Yes. Oh, I was oh, yeah, uh, about, yeah. about to run off, brother. And and everyone should know that they announced that Wednesdays are going to be their new uh, prime release date. So if any episodes. Are currently still coming out on Fridays. That will continue, but after that's over, after those seasons are over, Wednesdays are going to be their date. I like that. I actually like something new in the middle oh. of the week, and it spreads it out too. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Because on Fridays, when everything comes out, I'm like, oh my god, yeah, yeah. You know, Netflix does some movies on Thursday and does a couple of things on Saturday, uh-huh. but primarily it's Friday. I like that spreading out. I think Amazon should take like Monday for, I know that seems like a word, but just take a different day. Just do it because it, it works out for them. Uh-huh. It works out for us. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? It's good because we're still going to end up watching it later on anyway. Yeah. But I like that Wednesday is the day. It's again, it's different. It's there. Uh-huh. I'm all for it. You know, yeah. this is the first thing that they've done this on a Wednesday. Correct. Is locally. Yes. Everything else is on Fridays for their movies. Well, and well, well serious, yeah, serious. But I don't know. Are all their movies for Friday the ones that have that have like premiere access and then come out after the premiere access? For the most part, yeah, they were. Right. I honestly didn't even know how that math worked out. But I don't know if, if you know. I'm going to go way back because the hell well, we talking about stuff that we love. So let me we we talk about black phone up. Black folks entertaining us. I don't mm-hmm. know if you ever t- knew about this show. It's a show called um, Desmond's. Uh, I vaguely it was remember. On like the BBC in like maybe like the early mid 2000s, I want to say. Because mm-hmm. um, I used to watch it on BBC America. It was a sitcom about uh, a barbershop. Okay. And it was a West Indian family. Mm hmm. On the barbershop, it was a father, a mother. I think there was a son and a daughter. I, I know they have multiple children, and it was just like you know, sitcom stuff, you know what I mean. But it was so first of all, it was set in a barbershop, which we didn't get that unless we saw a barbershop or barbershop two or barbershop three mm-hmm. or barbershop on Showtime, but it was still a barbershop. The Desmond's was so different, especially to be on the BBC. Because everything else on there is just white. Right. And this wasn't on BET, which is the only other place that you could really get all black entertainment, which is right. what the channel stands for, black entertainment, right. or television. But to see this West Indian family, and they were all like different shades. The father was light skinned, the mother was darker skinned. And to see them interacting and them traversing life in uh in their neighborhood in England. And owning a business and the hijinks that would ensue, obviously, because again, it's a it's a sitcom. And they had a friend that was the father's best friend. They've been friends for decades, and his name was Pork Pie. Not making that up. That's not a joke. I want to say that that, that was a nickname. Hoping that was a nickname. Because God forbid, if your parents named you Pork Pie. I don't know why they did that to you. <laughs> I think you can maybe catch it on YouTube. You can maybe catch it on like another. Um, BBC channel that we don't get here in the states. Possibly, mm-hmm. I actually want to check the um, check Amazon too because there was another show that came up that people have been talking about lately called Time Wasters. 
Yeah, I saw people posting about that, Joe. That looks like my next binge. It looks ridiculous. Mm. Black people that go back in time, which we normally say we will not do, but it's I think it's by accident and the time mm -hmm. machine gets broken. Mm -hmm. So they're in like, I think it's first they go to 1920s. Then I think the second season, they're stuck in the 1950s. Mm. But this is also from London, I, I, I want to say. Um, England. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that looks like it's going to be my next one. It's a group of musicians who travel back in time by accident and then mm -hmm. they have to live there but it's yeah it, it looks so cool and to make a sitcom of it bbc does some weird sitcom stuff with um but they make it work they got some random ass sitcoms like they're bringing sitcoms back that america should not try to because america just does crap sitcoms with laugh tracks yeah but yeah this show was so different Again, West Indian and the way they would, and when you would hear the accent, yeah. if you like, again, being here in um, New Jersey, but having ties to New York and most, most black people in New York, when you hear your parents or grandparents or what have you, you know the accent. Right. You don't say vegetable, you say vegetable. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> yeah. You know, I said vegetable for probably the first seven years of my life mm. until a teacher was like oh it's vegetable and i was like what it's, no. it's, ve it's vegetable because every time i heard vegetable was from my father mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. my mother I, I think my mother would only say the actual would say corn or carrot like would actually say what the vegetable was mm -hmm. so i would go to school and i would always say vegetable mm -hmm. i'm in school just rocking the patois <laughs> yeah. out. vegetable yes vegetable. <laughs> And it was just beautiful. So yeah, that to me is a pick. If you can find it, watch Desmond's. It's then yeah. watch Time Wasters afterwards because I want to check that out. So yeah, Desmond's is a definite. I think it was three seasons, and there was an end to it. Like you got an end, and then Pork Pie had a spinoff, which I think was one or two seasons. I can't really remember. Mm. It wasn't as um, as grabbing as Desmond's was. You know. All right. All right. All right. What about you, brother? What you got that black people been entertaining you with for years? Because because we've been doing a damn thing. Years. Mm. Centuries, actually, if you want to get down with it. <laughs> not going to not, 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 not gonna go that route, though. Oh, man. Mm. I don't know. I mean, I think the thing that uh, one of the movies that really stands out to me from this year was Judas and the Black Messiah. I thought and, you were going to say another movie, but this one, yes. I'll actually say the next one because that nope. one hit both of us. Okay. Yes. Judas Ooh. and the Black Messiah. I think the only issue that I have with Judas and the Black Messiah is not even about the movie. It was mm -hmm. really about the. It was really about the Oscar campaign for it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I felt mean? that coming. I felt that coming, brother. And mm -hmm. in a, in a way, I understand what happened. Like they, why they chose to put the Keith Stanfield and Daniel. Um, yeah, Daniel Kaliah in the same category because they were basically in some ways trying to do a solid for Chadwick. Mm -hmm. But but I mean that 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 just leads to a bigger a bigger problem that I've always had with how performances are considered and how they're nominated anyway. Because this isn't the first mm -hmm. movie that's had that problem where it's like you see the movie and you're like, okay, Daniel Kulai is the lead. Is mm -hmm. easily the lead. <laughs> so why is he not <laughs> nominated as the lead actor? You know what I mean? But um, again, Daniel Kulai has been a good actor for a long time. And I'm not just talking about Get Out. Like, I saw him on Black Mirror. You've seen yes. him in little things. Like he's been out there doing the work for a while. Mm -hmm. And I and I think that it's just it's interesting that 
there's a certain segment of the population that only knows who Daniel Kulai is now because of Judas and the Black Messiah. Meanwhile, he's been out here forever mm -hmm. <laughs> doing the good work, like doing the good work, literally. And listen, Lakeith Stanfield? <laughs> uh, I don't even know what to say about Lakeith Stanfield. And I know a lot of people gave Lakeith Stanfield heat. Because of Yasuke, there were a lot of people who weren't happy about his his voice performance in Yasuke. But that's they, not his they, fault. Yeah, they, they weren't happy about a lot of things about that anime. Yeah, I that, liked that, it for what it was, but yeah. I can understand the gripes, honestly. Yeah. I, but I still like my t-shirt that I got from him. Yeah. But I mean, that aside, Lakeith Stanfield has been a good actor for a, a, a little bit now. You know, here in the last few years, like he's really good on Atlanta for people who haven't seen Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Um, he's really, really good on that show. And then he was also in that movie with um Yes, Adam Sandler, Uncut Gems, which he's good in that too. He's good in a movie called The Photograph, if you haven't seen that mm -hmm. movie. There's also um oh my god uh the near future alternate reality um sorry to disturb you no 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 is it no is not yes yes it, is it sorry to disturb you I think it is yeah is that it? movie was just out of nowhere that movie was just I watched it on a lark because you and someone else recommended it mm -hmm. and I watched it and I was like sitting there like I what mm hmm. And I'm just like, this movie is ridiculous. Yeah, he... Yeah. yeah. Now, do you know if there have ever been two actors nominated, two actors for the same movie nominated for Best Actor? For Best Actor? Yeah. I would imagine... <laughs> I want to say... <clears throat> Yes, and I could be I could I could be wrong about this. I the, the movie that I want to say, and I could be wrong about it, and if I'm wrong, then someone will correct me. I want to say Godfather 2. I would imagine that both Robert De Niro and Al Pacino were both nominated for Best Actor. I would imagine so. From what I know. And what I heard recently, if I'm remembering correctly, it was a movie called Sleuth. Oh, okay. Michael Michael Caine and Sir Lawrence Olivier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I heard that, I was like, so we could have nominated. I was like, all right, cool, whatever. Yeah, yeah. So, sorry yeah. to bother you. That's what it was. Not disturb, but sorry to bother you. Sorry to bother you. Yes, yes, yes. Which is, you know what? Let me like that on Hulu. Make sure that they know that I dug that movie. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, he's been out here doing that. He, and he's, yeah, he's I know also, his style isn't for everybody. Yeah, he's also but he's in, got a flow. He's also in Lives Out. <laughs> yes. Oh my God, yes. 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 Look, he's, yes, he is. Is, he's, a, he's a really good actor. I, I don't care what anybody says. And he was also in Get Out. In that role that makes you go. Uh huh. Yes, yes. He was also he was also and that's a, yeah, and that's a very small role that he's in, but like impactful. very small but impactful. Yes, and it's like and 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 it's like two different roles too. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It's two different roles. Yes, they uh, yeah. We're just gonna do a show where we just run down his whole filmography <laughs> and yeah, exactly. just talk about the work. That, but he's yeah, he's one of them cast that been, but he really didn't come up to prominence until like um Atlanta. Yeah. Yeah, because Atlanta is yeah. one of those rare shows that, uh, you know, I don't think that I ever thought Atlanta would wind up being as good as it is. Mm -hmm. Like, it, it, it's, and it's not that I don't like, um, it's not that I don't like this guy. It's not that I don't like, uh, what's his name? It's not that I don't like Donald Glover. I, I do. Mm -hmm. I, I like Donald Glover. But I don't know how to describe Atlanta to anybody who hasn't seen it. It is funny as hell. 
<laughs> it's like offbeat humor, but you get it. But right? you, you, but you have to get it. That's the thing. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And I I know that sounds weird, but you know what I'm saying when I say you have to get it. Yes. Yes. Because it's random humor, but it's like it's just. I still remember the. I I still haven't seen like the second season. I'll be honest with you, but I still remember the end of the first season. Yeah. And I was like, shit. I was like, what? Because it's you get these random humor stuff that's happening. It's funny. Then you get this soul hitting end. Uh-huh. But then you go, that's why. But then I was thinking, is that even legal? Is that even legal? Yeah. Can, yeah. can you even do that? But yeah. uh, but aside from that, yeah. It, it's, and it, yeah, and it's rare that you get a show. Especially even a show that's about us. Mm-hmm. Right? It, it's rare that you get a show where you have that much talent all in one all in one self-contained sort of story like Brian Tyree Henry like he's Stanfield as he beats it's like and these are all people who've done big things on the outside like it's just it's it's crazy to me mm-hmm. you know what i mean like i i listen <laughs> listen Sometimes it just takes a project to bring the yeah. right people together, yeah, yeah, and they each play that intricate role, mm-hmm. and it just and and it just makes sense. It it, it all locks together. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Sometimes mm-hmm. you can mash a, a character, a cast together, and yeah, it works out. It's good, what have you? Yeah. But you don't get that certain chemistry, that certain magic, that certain you got to get it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? That's yeah. it. And Zazzy, that I think this is my introduction to Zazzy. Mm-hmm. And I was like, who, where did, where has she been all these, where, why, uh, Hollywood, where, why uh, have you not, yeah. incredible. Yeah. <laughs> I just, are you serious? And yeah. it seems like, because you can catch, um, um, sorry to bother you, um, mm-hmm. Atlanta, I believe Deadpool 2 also, which is Zazie Beats as Domino, mm-hmm. incredible, are all on Hulu. Yes. So for only what five dollars, you can watch all this stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, if you get the bundle, you get Hulu, you get Disney Plus, and you get ESPN. Mm-hmm. I think it's what like seven dollars. Uh, more like thirteen dollars, bro. Oh, thirteen dollars now. Oh well, you mean if you if, have if, that if, bundle, if, if you get the whole bundle. Yeah, no, no, and, or as part no, of Hulu. Yeah, as no, no. If you got the the whole bundle with Disney Plus, Hulu, and then you get ESPN was part of it. There's like a bundle where it's like. I think seven dollars or something like that. Is it? It may have gone up, or they may not have it anymore. But I know they had it when it first came out. They had the yeah. bundle going. Yeah, yeah, they still have the bundle, but it's probably it's a, a little, bit, little more expensive now. Probably. Yeah, but yeah, yeah I mean, it's amazing. For me, since we're gonna stick on Hulu a little bit, yeah. Um, the United States versus Billy Holiday. Mm. That's where I thought you were going. But you went somewhere deeper. So I said, okay, let yeah. me parry that and go I, with this one. Yeah, but I, I also had a problem with that movie too. Almost not being recognized at all. Should have been. It was I I remember hearing about it. <laughs> yes. Like on Hulu. And then from a couple of people online. But I thought it was gonna be like, you know, just one of those, you know, like a just one of those like those streaming movies that you know that gets no play. Mm-hmm. And I remember watching it. I, I was so into it, I didn't wait to turn on my TV. Yeah, I watched on my tablet and I didn't move. And which you know, obviously, you, you don't want to watch on your TV. Mm-hmm. I was watching on my tablet. And I was like, Shh. I didn't want to break away from it. Mm-hmm. It was that, and I remember texting you afterwards and going, "This brother, this what the fuck?" Yeah. Um, Andra Day, Travante Rhodes. Yes. It just uh, this movie, uh, and this is directed by uh, Lee Daniels. Yes. It just it. The story of Billie Holiday and um, her song Strange Fruit and how they would not get off her back about this song. And she would sing it just to spite them at a certain point. And it and and it um it uh, it documents her uh, her drug use and um, loves of her life, <clears throat> excuse me, and her being bisexual uh-huh. um, and her um illness it just it andrew day who i was not familiar with she's a singer correct 
singer, yes. I was not because I don't. I'm still listening to Rick James, y'all. Don't don't listen to me for nothing. <laughs> um, I'm still listening to super freaking shit. So. Mm. And I'm watching this, and I'm like, this is so. Ooh. And then to not really hear about it with Oscars and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, she was nominated, Ooh. but I would make the argument that she is the best actress of this past Oscars. Yeah, season. because she never acted prior to doing this. In fact, this the role was something that she almost kind of totally Daniels no. Yeah. Like she 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 wasn't confident that she would be able to kind of pull it off because that's not what she does. She doesn't act. You know what I mean? And he somehow talked her into it. And a lot of the things that she did for this role are things that really are kind of dangerous to someone who's never really done it. Like mm-hmm. She basically took up smoking, took up drinking, (laughs) um, lost an insane amount of weight for the role. Um, It's such a raw and and channeled performance for somebody who has never done this before. Like, this isn't her wheelhouse. Like, she doesn't know anything about acting. (laughs) <laughs> you and, know what I mean? And looked like she knew everything about acting. Exactly. So and what does that tell you? Exactly. So for her to not win was a, it was kind of a travesty. It really kind of mm. was. But okay. <laughs> so um but if you guys haven't seen that movie, you should yeah. because it it's not not performances aside and directing aside, it's topical. Mm-hmm. Like how things really kind of haven't changed. They're still exactly the, almost the same now as they were then. Yeah, it 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 hit like that's what it was. It hit so hard. It, not just her life yeah. Yeah. and what she was doing, but what they were doing to her. Yeah. And my man had he was like he was just so angry. I was like, why is he so pressed? Why? Yeah. Why? <laughs> why? They yeah. they would stand in the like in the um, the venue and just wait for her and just be standing there like. If you sing that song, I swear to you. Mm-hmm. You know how your mama get the tight mouth. Like, oh, mm-hmm. The my man was standing there like that, and she would just start. So who wants to see me? So here what so who wants to hear me say, sing strange fruit? And I was like, mm-hmm. she did not come to play with y'all. She did not. And she started singing it. They come up on stage, grab her, throw her in jail. Then for Travante to play the role yeah. of this um undercover. Who falls in love with her, but then keeps having her. That was kind of problematic to me. I'm gonna be real with you. He kept <laughs> turning a dime on her, but then was still in love with her. I was like, dude, just and he would follow and then have lunch with them. He would sit there with them and everything. I'm like, mm-hmm. he's still on the he he's still on like on the clock, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And be there, it was just so wild to me. I was, but it was so it, yes, it was incredibly topical. Seems like our topics don't die out very often. They they stay mm-hmm. fresh. Mm-hmm. They stay fresh and ready. They mm-hmm. got preservatives. Mm-hmm. Our topics will live longer than a Twinkie. They they, they will stay. True. But it That's was true. Yeah, she, mm. yeah, Toronto Rhodes. Like, dude, I I don't think there's anything that I didn't like. Underrated. I'm gonna be honest with you. I even like he was to me the best part about Predators. Yes. Or or the Predator. Which yeah. one was it? What's it? No, yeah, the uh, Predator. The Predator. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't like that movie particularly. I didn't either. I thought, well, this is a side note. <laughs> um, since, since we're on the topic of talking about Predators, or yes. Predator sequels, Predators was the best one, and they should have just left it alone. Yeah, that, that was the coolest, because it was Killers versus Killers. Like, that yeah. was, yeah, that was... And it, it basically is a flip of the first movie. Mm-hmm. It's, now the humans are going to where they are. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and they're about to get a lesson in why you should have stayed your ass out of here. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was yeah. It, it just yeah. That 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 was a good one. Yeah. I mean, I love seeing um Ashy um uh uh Danny Glover. Yeah. <laughs> why does he always have a scene where he looks like he's confused? Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Riggs. Riggs. Exactly. Get, the- <laughs> get the shit. Riggs. Get, get, get the shit. Riggs. Get in here. Him and that old flintlock pistol he had in his hand. Yeah. Uh, 
<laughs> but the, yeah, it, it um, it, yeah, mean, that, that newer one just feels like a dumbed down version of Predator. It's like it was horrible, but it why? was linked to. So it is a sequel. Yes. To Predator, like not. It's I don't think it's part of like the Alien Predator lo- mm-hmm. combo mm-hmm. universe. I, mm-hmm. Like I don't know. It's but it, I, I watch it in theaters and I was like. Oh, what the fuck? It was just there was no point. It was just made to be made, but it wasn't even made in a fun way. Mm-hmm. But it was made, which is funny. It was made by Shane Black, mm-hmm. who was in the first one. Mm-hmm. And he what wrote and directed this one, or just directed it? I, I, think he I can't directed it. Yeah. yeah, he should have had more nuance to it, be, yeah. being there with the first one. Yeah. Yeah, but it yeah. just it yeah the second it's one crazy. was actually cool excuse me um predators was actually cool yeah i saw that about three times when i was in the hospital because they kept showing it on sci-fi mm-hmm. yeah. sci-fi will run a movie into the goddamn ground uh, absolutely. They, absolutely they really will <laughs> that damn time that you think you're living in is actually just another night they were showing the same damn movie <laughs> um you know what on that note let's talk about like some some black heroes that you didn't think were going to be the heroes in, in movies. Mm. Um, I'm going to bring up two right now that I think were cool. One is Sanaa Lathan in okay. Aliens vs. Predator, the first one. Mm-hmm. Did not know that she was going to be the lead mm-hmm. because we had not gotten a black woman in a modern sci-fi survival horror movie lead mm-hmm. like that. I was like, and when she lived, I, I was in the theater. I, I was clapping, and that, that, that was that was my I think that was my introduction to, to Sanaa Lathan. No, 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 Blade was. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Blade yeah, was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But seeing so I was like, "We ain't gonna clap for this sister. We ain't gonna." Clap. Mm-hmm. And then when she got the scar, and she was a part of like their clan, I was like, "Let me see more of of her roles in this. I, I want to see w- what happens to her character after that." They didn't obviously went with the mm-hmm. boring ass way of. Alien vs. Predator Requiem, which who mm-hmm. gave a rat's ass mm-hmm. after seeing Sonal Lathan go toe to toe with with aliens and predators, mm-hmm. and then we've got the people under the stairs, mm-hmm. and what's a fool? Fool, I think was the character's name. Yeah. Again, we we weren't getting that. We weren't getting those, especially in like that time, because it was like slasher movies. I mean, perfect thing to watch. Um, what was that documentary? Came out a couple of years ago. Which one? About um black people in, in in horror and how like there were, um, n- noir horror noir horror noir. Yes. Yeah. yes, 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 yes. If you do not know about us in horror and you want to see something that shows us being, I learned about so many movies watching that. I was like, oh, I, I got to watch it. I Yeah, that was also those two movies got me because you you weren't seeing that in horror movies. You were seeing we were either the second or we were the second to last to die because we had to save our we had to sacrifice ourselves to save the lead white character. No, go. I'll fight him. No, no, you're not. Remember, my man caught that fade when he went up against Jason. Mm-hmm. Why would you why he got his head knocked off? Dude, why? But I give him credit. He did. He, he was wearing that. He was wearing that. That's that that um that windbreaker suit. He was like, "Yo, square up." I was like, mm-hmm. "Is this what we're doing right now?" So <laughs> he was about to die. Here we mm-hmm. go. But yeah, those are those are movies I wasn't expecting it, and you got it, and I was happy because we lived. Also, um, what the hell was that shark movie? With a LL Cool J, where he was, oh, <laughs> where he survived. Deep Blue Sea. Yes, thank you. Mm-hmm. Keep it moving. How does like a shark's fin? Keep it moving. How does like a shark's fin? <laughs> movie was better than the song, but the song stays in my head for some reason. I don't know why. Mm-hmm. Who else you got, sir? Who else has made an impression on you? These incredible uh, uh, black entertainers and creators and content providers. Uh, let's see. Well, you know, I, I gotta, I gotta bring this guy up because, oh, oh, th- this possibly connects to a, a show we're presently watching on Disney Plus. Uh-oh. Uh oh, I gotta talk about Jonathan Majors, yeah. who just kind of yeah. 
there's just something about him and and another the, one who blew up. Yeah, there's, there's something about him and in, in the in the roles that he portrays that is like I I gotta I gotta <laughs> I got to watch it. Like I got to watch what he's doing and, 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 you know, what his next move is like, mm-hmm. it's, it's interesting because I used to talk about, cause if for people who don't know, Denzel Washington is probably one of my favorite actors of all time. Mm-hmm. And it's because he has this rare, rare ability to lift the content around him (laughs) right like oh yes yes and and the movie listen the movie could be awful and and i've seen movies he's been in that wind up being awful heart condition heart (laughs) heart condition um but he elevated it he did You, you you're not lying yeah it's rare like i don't know very many actors that are able to do that like he is the he is the draw. It's not necessarily the movie that's the draw. It's him that's the draw. Mm-hmm. You know, so I'm sure there are plenty of movies in the, in the late '90s, early 2000s that because they got Denzel in it, helped them a lot. Because they were probably yeah, they were probably movies that people wouldn't have seen. You know what I mean? And um, but you trust him. Exactly. Even in a bad movie, you still trust him. Exactly. So I I used to think to myself, there'll never be another Denzel Washington. <laughs> like, there, there just isn't. Like, no one has that kind of... No one has that kind of draw and that kind of bankability and talent. Right? Mm-hmm. Because when you think about... When you think about Denzel, you think about he came from TV. Like, he was on mm-hmm. a show called St. Elsewhere. And that yeah. was my reason to watch St. Elsewhere every week. Yeah. It's because Denzel Washington was on it. You know? He, and, he was the one that would get not just, you know, audience in general, but black audiences. Yeah. Because and, he, he felt him. Right. But now, when I look at it, I feel like his... His legacy has kind of been spread around to a lot of actors now, like a lot of black actors that are, are mm-hmm. really good right now. Like I can go down the list, like Sterling K. Brown, Chadwick, yes, rest in peace, uh, yes, Lakeith, uh, um, <laughs> Jonathan Majors, who I'm going to continue about, like his son, John David Washington. He influenced that next generation. That's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to influence that next generation. It, he, exactly. Exactly. Sterling example of it. Sterling example. Exactly. So when I when I look at a guy like Jonathan Majors and I think about the things that I've seen him in, I'm gonna throw this movie on. I think you've seen it, brother, because I recommended it to you. The Last Black Man in San Francisco, which is a movie that people need to see because no one a twenty four movie. Yep. We are friends of A24, A24 friends, friends Hello, of the show. Thank you. I love you. Thank you. <laughs> um, it's mm. just good. Like, it's just a really good movie about, you know, gentrification in a major city in America. You know, and, and that isn't what, New York, too. That isn't New York. And what the fallout is for things that happen like that. You know what I mean? And, and mm. how that affects people and, 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 and and neighborhoods and generations and, and and things like that. So he's really good in that movie. I think that's when I really kind of became aware of him. You know what I mean? I became aware in the, the Five Bloods. Uh, that's when I became because I was like, <laughs> he's good in that movie too. Here's the thing about him: you have all this talent, yes. these A list. No, no pun intended, but pun intended. He's true. A-list quality yeah, actors. True. Yeah, I agree. But to the, but at the corner of your eye, you keep looking at him. Yep. Because he keeps pulling you in. Yeah, he's got this intensity that you can't really And that's see. an intense-ass movie in those scenes. Like, yeah, it's intense yeah, towards yeah. the end. Yeah, but he pulls you into that. Yeah, he's got this thing that you can't teach. You either have it or you don't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yep. And 
Yeah, I mean, Five Bloods. And then when we, we talk about a show that, <laughs> that, that basically just kind of changes the landscape of sci-fi horror when we talk about a, a show like Lovecraft Country. Yeah. Which is not just, I mean, it's not just about him. Like, he's a major part of it, but it's not just about him. Like, everyone on that show, black characters are heroes in some way, shape, or form throughout the run of that show. And villains. <laughs> and villains, yes. Yes, that too. And, but, all, but they're also but complicated, because a hero and a villain, yeah. I mean, they're all complicated. They all have their, their gray areas. And yeah. at a certain point, you actually see that his character is problematic and says something incredibly hateful to his father and that was the that was when I started going maybe he's not the one yes um but it that that's a show that everyone uplifts I mean, yes. not that it, it was bad it, it wasn't bad mm -hmm. but everyone uplifts and makes it because you could have had a flat cast and it would have been like mm -hmm. yeah but everybody that deserves a rewatch from the yeah and then when we talk about this, I mean, this, you know, you and I, brother, we talk about sometimes you have to, in casting, especially for a genre piece that people love and they know, mm -hmm. sometimes you have to do inspired casting. It just has to be, because it can't just be the general, yeah, this will work. <laughs> type thing. It, it has to be something that's just so out of the box that it makes a whole lot of sense. Like when we first heard about this guy being cast as um this guy being cast as uh Deathstroke. Isai oh, Morales. Isai when, Morales. when we heard about Isai Morales, we were like, what? <laughs> like what? <laughs> bodied that role. Bodied it. <laughs> yeah. Bodied it. Yeah. So after everything that we've seen in the MCU, to even think about bringing someone with the weight of Kang into this next chapter. Who is a huge heavy hitter. Yes. You have to go inspired. Like, you have to go inspired. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, and to a certain extent, to a certain extent, this guy was inspired casting for Thanos. Because I wasn't thinking about him at all. Uh, Josh Brolin? Yeah. I was not thinking Josh Brolin at all <laughs> when they announced mm -hmm. it. So but he you. makes sense. He makes sense. He, he made sense as Cable, too. Yeah, absolutely. although I, I would have liked what's name more as cable, I think, but he, Josh Brolin did a great job. Um, Stephen, Stephen Lang, yes, yes, because yeah. yeah. he just yeah. had to look, you know, he, yeah, he does he have to look, look. and he, he, he has a sound, look. he's very gruff and old, yeah, but, <laughs> that's what you yeah. need, true. But, um, <laughs> but to think of Jonathan Majors as Kang, like, mm -hmm. I can kind of already see, like, I don't even want to see what he looks like in, in, in the in the getup, right? Mm -hmm. I'm thinking more about his intensity and what he's going to bring to delivering certain lines as this character. Right. His actual acting. Exactly. To it. Because that's what you have to base it on is the acting, and then you go with the suit and the special effects. But your base has to be that acting. You have to be able to bring that character to life. Exactly. Exactly. And when I hear you, I have to go, like my eyes can be closed. When I hear you, I have to go, oh, oof, right. oof. Right. And it, that's just inspired casting to me. Mm. Like super inspired casting. <laughs> and he's, I mean, like, uh, again, and it's going to be that kind of, it's going to be like that double propel. Yeah. To be propelled from Lovecraft Country to the MCU, then the MCU just propels you even more. Yeah, and what other projects are we gonna have out there for? Like that's just, like that's just cool to me. I, I, I love seeing that this this show that we were, that you know black black people were like, yo, this is gonna be hot. Yeah, just check this out, whatever. Then it became this phenomenon, and it was the first. And I'm hoping it was the first of like these limited 
series because we only needed one season. No, 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 no. Watchmen was more of that. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. there, because HBO has like a like a love of it now, and I love it. You know, that's mm-hmm. all we need. Sometimes mm-hmm. just that one season, it's, it's, it's fine. Um, especially yeah, with the streaming yeah. service, you, you yeah. just do that one season, that's fine. Yeah, and I'll say it again because I, I've said it. I said it one in one of our earlier shows that, and I know a lot of it. A lot of people will think it's about because his last name is Majors. <laughs> But you remember what I said that day. I was like, Yeah, I would not mind him being Steve Austin in a in a limited series of the six million dollar man. Yeah, I think it would be just so inspired to have it be played by him kind of with the, the 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 with the overtones of how you know how black people are viewed in society in general mm-hmm. like i i think it would it would really bring something to it that i don't think has ever really been there you could bring some definite priority. layers to it you, you could definitely yeah. bring layers to that and have it be a social commentary as well as a sci-fi yeah action or whatever genre that that you want to put into it, you, you definitely could do that because I think, I mean, it, to be, to how you're seen in America, to be seen as a weapon, to be broken, uh-huh. then the government rebuilds you, you owe them now, you're their property, technically, you, you know what I mean, having to do that. And if you don't do what we say, that we can shut, you know, your body down, uh-huh. there's a lot of layers that they can go with there. Yeah, I would definitely like to see that um you got to get the right director for that too you, you got to get oh, somebody yeah. who can give i don't know who i would get for that i don't yeah that's hard i don't know <laughs> i honestly don't know somebody who who can do act like excuse me, action but also do some drama yeah to it um i'm gonna i'm i'm, I'm gonna go with uh because this movie hits me because of regina king mm. and her directorial debut mm. one night in miami mm-hmm Regina, I've said it numerous times. Come through. <laughs> come, come through. through. Come through. We have the technology. <laughs> we get we have your just I'll look there. There's the invite button right there. I hit the button, <laughs> email, etc. It'd be great. Uh this movie was just beautiful. Um, this is the movie of uh four iconic black um stars. Uh, not even I can't even say so because stars even like diminishes it for iconic like living legends at at the time. Uh-huh. Um, we have a uh, Ben, excuse me, a uh, Kingsley Ben Adair who was Malcolm X. We have Eli Gorey who was um, Cassius Clay in the uh-huh. beginning of the movie, then Muhammad Ali at the end of the movie. Uh-huh. Aldous Hodge, y'all know I dig Aldous. He was um, Jim Brown. Um, he's going to be uh, Hawkman. Uh-huh. Um, and then we have Leslie Odom Jr., who played Sam Cook. That his Sam Cook hurt me, man, because uh-huh. when he was talking about um, oh, uh, what's the dude that um, that ended up stealing it, that ended up like sleeping with his wife and everything. Um, oh my God, it was another singer. Uh... Damn, I'm trying to think. And the, the dude was dirty. You found out the dude was dirty. He ended up dating the daughter after that, too. Um, Bobby Womack. Ah, yes, 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 yes. <clears throat> when he talked about Bobby and getting Bobby money, <clears throat> every character in his, every, I, I shouldn't say character because they're actually real people. Every one of them, the way they spoke, I wanted to tell them, no, watch out. This Because you have the, you already know what happens. Mm-hmm. I wanted to tell Malcolm, Malcolm, don't go out there. I wanted to tell Sam, Sam, don't trust Bobby. Keep mm. Bobby away from your wife mm. and your daughter, brother. Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted to tell Jim, Jim, look, you got to do something, brother. You got, because you go down a wrong path with some red hats, man. I, mm. I You can't do that. And I wanted to tell Muhammad Ali, just slow down with the boxing, brother. Don't. Mm-hmm. You, 
so it's almost like this tragic movie because you know what ends up happening mm -hmm. but their interaction together is so beautiful and then you hear um leslie odom jr singing a change will come mm -hmm. and it's just it everything was great you get lance reddick is that his name yes he pops up and stuff and still scenes and then goes away he does it continue. He, there's something that he he's gonna be a part of um, that was I think announced a couple of days ago, and I was like, this Resident dude just Evil. pops up. Yes, yes, he uh -huh. he's gonna play um uh, uh the Westler. Yep. First off, they mad. Yeah, I know they're mad. <laughs> nah, I'll be honest with you. I, yeah, I don't. I, I don't even care that they're mad because I I no. I, I I'm be watched, mad. I watched an interesting interview with him on YouTube mm -hmm. and uh, the interviewer was asking him about um, his time on uh, The Wire and, and how mm. like you know they were on HBO at a time where everything else was more important at HBO Sopranos and all this other stuff mm -hmm. and The Wire and The Wire was basically every season was basically a kind of a last minute yeah we're gonna bring this back yeah we're gonna bring this back even though it was probably the best show on hbo at the time mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what i mean and he was like you know like how his his career basically kind of went dormant after mm -hmm. being on the wire like mm -hmm. he had gone a, a while like before he gotten anything really good. You know what I mean? And Lance Reddick and everything he's ever been in that I've seen him in. This man can act. And he's worth watching every time he does something. Like mm -hmm. I can go back to <clears throat> I'm gonna talk about a show that I really, really loved when it was on. Because the entire cast on the show is great. But he in particular was really good on it. Fringe. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh just I mean I when I think of Lance Reddick, not only do I think of the wire, I think of Fringe, I think of even his role in John Wick. Yeah. And people people say it's a very small role, but I almost feel like it's an important role. In it, it could have been just one movie. It could have been in just yeah. one movie, and, and it could have been a, a throwaway character. Yeah. He was that good and that captivating, let's be honest, because if Hollywood was going to put that money into it, yep. they wouldn't have been like, yeah, let's bring you back in. And they wouldn't have increased his role every time. They wouldn't mm -hmm. have. Mm -hmm. And he mm -hmm. brings it. Yes, Mr. Wick. Yes. Your room is, yes. It, yes. The, he every every movie he's in, yeah. And I prayed he didn't die in John. Oh, I was like, oh, you, you better not kill. You <laughs> exactly. better not kill. You better not kill my man. You better not. Exactly. And he every scene he's in, no matter what the movie, it could be whatever. He kills. He brings this aura. He brings this. He brings that. Every time, that's how you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. And for him to where bullets are flying everywhere, and he survives, mm -hmm. John Wick. Mm -hmm. And then you see him in Oz, yeah, Oz where he's too, like, yeah. "What the yeah. undercover cop ends up becoming a drug addict." Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I think that may have been my introduction to him. I, I think, yeah, that may have been it. Yeah, yeah. And he just he just comes in. First of all, dude, don't age. No, no. <laughs> but then again, you know, sometimes you know stuff don't crack. So we. <laughs> Stay bad. And he just comes in and he's always a surprise. He's always like, it's almost like like that extra, like, like that extra nugget that you never play. and you're like, oh yeah, you and you're like, oh, oh, oh. It's, it's almost like that he's like that extra, he's like a surprise, but that you're like, wow, this wouldn't have worked without him. He felt like he was needed in there, even if it may have been like this secondary background character or scene. Yeah. He always does. I always when I see him in there, I'm like, oh. And I'm I'm looking forward to see hitting him as Wexler. I want yeah. to see what he does. Absolutely. With that, with with that whole uh, thing, because that's like to, to think of him in, in like a horror movie, 
mm-hmm. and being like the big bad and just because he's got that presence he's already got it there he's got mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know oh yeah oof damn <laughs> Babe, he, he he played was he played one of uh, Malcolm's bodyguards. Yes, and it and it just the movie was incredible. Regina King directorial debut, but she's been on this game. She y'all y'all got to remember two two seven. She's learned. She knows. She this is a craft to her. Yeah, she's been good for a long time, and she gets better with each project. Mm-hmm. Which is I I absolutely love I I love that I I love the to see so much progression, especially a black woman uh-huh. in Hollywood who were so many other child stars. You see them either fade out or they become a part of the system in some way. Um, uh, drugs, um, arrests, robberies, they fall off. She, I mean, she's had like, you know, dips, but she's always been steady. She's mm-hmm. been consistent. Consistency mm-hmm. is key in no matter what you do, and she has done that. And she's, she's fine. Lord Jesus, she's fine. Just she's directing Bitter Root, isn't she? I want to say yes, because I remember, yeah, because that's going to be... I, I'm trying to think if that's going to be, I, I believe, a movie and, and instead of a series, which I would take both, but I, a series would be, you'd be able to get the depth of it, but again, it's still open. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? I mean, thinking of her, it just, it, oh my God, yes, 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 yes. It's just, yeah. Um, final thing that I'll bring up um, is an incredible series that I watched because I wanted to challenge myself and to open up my mind and to open up my borders. Um, there was a show I used to watch on Showtime, which was called Queer as Folk. Okay. Based off of English show, Queer as Folk, was about like um, the gay community and their lives and er- everyday stuff. But I always remember something about watching the show. It's like, there's nobody black, gay. I know there are black, gay people out there. I know. My uncle. Black and gay. No, no. Uh, he was not an, an, an anomaly. Uh, so a show came along on a new network called Logo. And it was a series called Noah's Ark. And it blew my mind because it was about these four. It was a half hour um, dramedy. But it could be cheesy, but cheesy in a good way where you it, it was like very endearing to you, where mm-hmm. it was like about these four gay black men, each in different parts of relationships and life. Um, Noah, the lead character, was an aspiring screenwriter. Um, there was Chance, who was married um, and had a daughter with uh, his husband. There was Alex, who was um, an H, an HIV um, counselor, who was married to, forgot his husband's name. He was a nurse, I want to say. I remember him in Scrubs. I think he was a nurse. Okay. Um, and then there was Ricky, who was the playboy, who was the promiscuous one. They each had different lives, but they were these best friends. And then you see. Um, them traversing life and love. It was two seasons, and I believe they had two movies. It was one of the best shows, it, and and it was like one of like their original projects. And it was like a flagship show for for local. It was on there in in the beginning, like when um when a RuPaul got RuPaul's. I think RuPaul's first show was Drag Race, or I think that was I can't remember what RuPaul's first show was on. Uh, but it was it. And I was, I believe it was Thursdays it would come on. I Thursday. It was one of the first things I actually put pro, pro, like programmed in, into my DVR when I had Comcast. The show was incredible. It was endearing. It was funny. Some of the lines were just incredibly just ridiculous. Again, it could be cheesy. It could also be so realistic and hit you in a way where you didn't think. The show opened up my mind in a lot of ways and it made me a better person because of it. And I 
if, if I could rewatch it now, I would, even though it's probably a little dated because it was, you know, in the um, late 90s, early to mid 2000s, possibly. Uh-huh. But I would rewatch it. The drop of a hat, I would rewatch the movies, everything. Just a really great series. If you have a chance to check it out, it's a sitcom, but, but there's there's no laugh track. It was one of those first sitcoms where they stopped doing laugh tracks and such. Um, but yeah, that show was just awesome. Just showcasing because the only other time you ever really saw um, LGBTQ plus and black representation was more ballroom stuff. Um, Paris is burning. Um, RuPaul, where it, you know, but then you, so you you go from that, then you come to shows now like Pose. Yeah. So it's been incredible, and I mean, it's not just Juneteenth, but it's also Pride Month. So, you know, it was amazing. Um, also watch Pariah. I don't know why I just threw that in there, but but, but watch Pariah. It's on Netflix now. Uh huh. Um, also has a link to Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I'm always looking out for them. I'm always trying to link them. I'm always trying to find them little segues. But that would be my 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 f- final. Well, not final forever because twice again next Juneteenth. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, Noah's Ark just hit me in a different way. I was like, and I would walk and I would be like, you know, I, and then I would go. I wonder if there are other. You know, like black straight men who are watching this and to see a different set of life and to just enjoy the entertainment and just going, damn, this is real, this is cool. Yeah, it's silly. It could be cheesy. It's a little goofy at times, but it's you need that. You need that also in, in your entertainment. So I was, and when, when I would talk about it, people would go, I never heard of, I never heard of. Now, if I mention, they go, oh my God, I love that show too. I go, where were y'all at? Where, where were you? Well, there wasn't really the internet back then. So, yeah, sorry. Because uh-huh. I'm old. So, whatever. What you got, brother? (laughs) (laughs) Ah, The the one I'm going to talk about involved in one of the most infamous Oscar moments of all time. But uh, deservedly so, because it clearly was the best picture of 2016. Uh, made me aware of a, a, a brilliant director that <laughs> I had to make this brother to, to this brother across from me aware of. <laughs> um, the movie I want to talk about is a movie called Moonlight. <clears throat> that, yeah, I saw Moonlight in the theater, I saw Moonlight in the theater. And I remember watching the whole thing, and then the at the very end of it, I couldn't, mm-hmm. I couldn't. Pro- <laughs> and this is gonna sound awful, but it's not. I couldn't process everything that I just seen. <laughs> like I was like, okay, I'm like, and I had to sit with it for a while because I knew I knew immediately after I'd seen it that I wanted to see it again. Mm-hmm. But I waited. I, I waited because I, I didn't want to see it right away. I wanted to sit and just kind of think about this movie for a while after I'd seen it. Uh, this is one of the most beautifully shot films I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. Yes. And, and it, it's also one of the most brilliantly acted <laughs> movies that I've ever seen. You know, it, it's also gotten mm-hmm. Mahershala Ali his very first Oscar, and it made I, I feel like this movie, even though he had been out there for a while, I'd seen him in you know, in uh, I'd seen him in um, House of Cards mm. as, the, as the Remy Denton character, which he was great in. I felt like this movie kind of made him aware to everyone you know and you know his his will we bring it back to Javante Rhodes yep another link there we go yep. uh, there is a reason 
Here's where we bring it back to there is an MCU link in this film. Mm-hmm. There is there's an actor oh. in this film named Alex R. Hibbert who plays the young kid on the beach. Mm-hmm. He is the young kid in Black Panther at the very end mm-hmm. that's talking to T'Challa when he comes to back to Oakland. Well, that's one of two MCU links. <laughs> yes, yes. Daywalker! Yes, 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 yes. Well, future MCU link. Future let's, MCU link. Let's see, yes. future MCU link. Yep. Uh, we got um. Oh, my man from uh, When They See Us. Yes. Um, uh, I'm trying to remember the brother's name. Who he just he he leaps off the stages. Uh, excuse me, well, stage yes. He 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 leaps off the screen at you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He, he. Oh my god. Yeah. That. I still. His episode on um, his uh, the Corey episode from that still gives me chills. Yeah, and seeing how he is still so positive, and after all that, I mean, yeah, you you are living now and so but after going through all that, and I would, I don't know if I would be that positive, and if I would be that, yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't care. Yeah. I mean, Moon, Moonlight is just one of those movies that's just like oh out God, of nowhere, like, out of out of nowhere, but almost kind of like right on time, like mm-hmm. just like you know this idea that you know there are there are people in the black community who struggle with being real about their sexuality and. You know, Moonlight mm-hmm. kind of being this film that kind of empathizes but uses it as an example on how to be or how to try to become your authentic self. Mm-hmm. Like how just the way that, listen. But doesn't use stereotypes either. No, doesn't. Doesn't. And 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 then for Barry Jenkins, who I'd never heard of prior to Moonlight, to kind of make this movie and and the way he shoots us in particular, there's just something about the way he frames shots with us in it, and the way that he makes us look in those shots when he does it. Oh, it's. It, it carries over, carries over to a movie that I recommended to this brother, Crush from Me Again. Yes. If Beale Street Could Talk, his second film, which is also a very good film to see. Um, Moonlight, I, I, I don't even know. I, I still kind of don't have <laughs> the words to express how I feel about Moonlight, even to this day. Moonlight, Moonlight is just one of those movies that it, it it's... It's just amazing. It, it's it's amazingly done, and it, it it demands to be seen. It demands to be rewatched. It demands There's everything. No that, motion. Yeah, everything that there is about the movie. It, yes. It's just yeah. This it hits, movie. it hits on a level that <laughs> I just can't describe to you. <laughs> it honestly does. Moonlight hits on a level that is beautiful. Yeah. Um, it is the coming of age story of a young black man uh-huh. whose mother is a drug addict. And throughout all this, he's discovering and trying to figure out his sexuality. Uh-huh. And there are no stereotypes. It is not played for laughs. Nope. It is soul searching and soul searing as well. Uh-huh. Um, Jarell Jerome is the young cat's name. Jarell Jerome, yes. Um, also, we have a Janelle Monae. Yep. Naomi Harris. Yes. We have chock full of talent, and they all put it out there. Ashton um, Sanders is also in this movie. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, the beautiful thing about how Barry directs movies, not only does he film black people in the most incredible, beautiful way possible. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh the way he shoots when he has the character looking at you it's and i i want to say this might be me being layered or what have you or just projecting but this is him 
having you look at this black person. Mm-hmm. No, nothing else. You looking at this black person. Mm-hmm. You will see us, mm-hmm. but we are seeing how beautiful this black person is, how the lighting, but this black person is also seeing us mm-hmm. and acknowledging us. And he's showing us this unflinching, unwavering look at us who we are as people, who we are as beings, and who we are as black people, who we are just as beings. It's this incredible way of shooting. I've noticed it with his movies, and he, the way he, it'll usually be in a restaurant or whatever, they're sitting at a table and looking across from each other. Mm-hmm. And it's so well done, so beautiful, yeah, so is, candid. Yeah, there's an it's, intimacy about the way he shoots yes, his movies. That is just... That's the word, thank you. Just stunning, just stunning, like stunning in the way that it looks. It's just like, mm-hmm. <laughs> I, uh. <laughs> and it's and it's it's stunning and so different to be seen in such a mm-hmm. way that is stunning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, and to pr- uh, and to approach this topic in this beautiful way, in this way of seeing both the yin and the yang of being accepted and not being accepted, but then turns out you are end up being accepted because that person does feel the same way years later they find out. Yeah. And the tender um, uh, um, um, sexuality um, spark um, on the beach. Uh It's just, there's these moments and you're watching and you're like, and then I love this with his movies too. They just end. Yeah, yeah. And, but the story is still going, but the movie just ends because that's the reality of life. Mm-hmm. And you don't get a resolution maybe to things, or you might get a hint of a resolution. Like at the end of Moonlight, you do get a hint of a resolution. Mm-hmm. Then it ends. Bill Street, you get no resolution. It's just, well, and in a way, I guess you do because it just ends. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which his movies point out how life can be where this thing this part it, like it, it, it's going to keep going the movie can't can't show your entire life and what you're doing in every day it's mm-hmm. going to show this part this this is the part that defined you or that made you the person that you are what have you or that helped it was one of the moments that is, is part of your definition that in, in part defines you not your whole um defining moment and it's just yeah it's just yeah yeah, I don't believe Moonlight is on Netflix anymore. I think it's on. I don't know if it's back on Amazon. I'm not sure. Mm. But I know it's not on Netflix anymore. Yeah. Which it should still be on there. I don't understand why it's not, but you know, Harry. You know, it's wow. It's on Showtime. Showtime? Okay, that's probably why. Um, also, check out Hereditary because I think that's on Showtime too. Two different ends of the spectrum. <laughs> two, different ends of yeah. spectrum. Two, two completely different ends of the spectrum. Yeah. One is beautiful and touching, uh, heartbreaking, but still heartwarming. The other is, what did I just see? Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Um, damn. Okay, so I need like a month to go back and rewatch the stuff that we've talked about. <laughs> yeah. But for real, this is that's the thing. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful, man. It's. And there are so many more other. I didn't even get into comics, folks. Yeah, there were. A lot, there's a lot we left out. There are so. I mean, I can show you right here. This is a comic you should definitely be reading. Kill, uh, Philadelphia, horror. Philadelphia, obviously, because Philadelphia vampires, um, urban horror, black people fighting vampires. Beautiful. There, there's so much out there, um, but you know what? Follow us on IG. Follow us on uh, on. Uh, the gram, I don't know. Are 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 the are the the kids still saying the gram? Are they still yeah, saying that? Yeah, they are. In, or Insta, whatever. Oh, saying. Insta. I'm not saying that. <laughs> that right at all. I'm gonna keep saying the gram. Um, on FB, there are so many beautiful things that that we're putting out there to let you guys know. Hey, if you haven't watched this, watch this. Mm-hmm. This hits. There are so many things out there, and so many movies, uh, series novels music i'm good god two people i mean look at uh, jesus megan the stallion and lizzo if you're not listening to them not that i'm listening to everything they are but i love them because they are 
They are unabashed. They are free. They are black. They are rich and they are doing what they want. And they couldn't give a damn whether you like it or not. And I love that about these two black women. Um, and that's the whole purpose of Juneteenth is free. And, you know, supporting each other and the love and, you know, just being there and just running it. That's what, you know, that's it. Juneteenth, be free. Love. Y'all lucky I'm not out on the patio doing this and like cooking something on 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 other grill. For real. <laughs> For real. Yeah, exactly. I mean, not, not that that's what Juneteenth is all about, but you know what? Celebrate your friends, your family, your loved ones on Juneteenth. And, you know, I'm sure some of us have ancestors that, you know, were there. And you know, for whatever reason, stuff like that, and link and links to it. it There's so many more stories and movies and books and novels and music, and uh, we could be here all weekend. And then some. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But on that note, we are going to free our black asses of this um, <laughs> of this. Uh, this internet connection. No. <laughs> Brother, do you have any last words for this Juneteenth special episode? Uh, okay, house, don't go half ass. Let's just pass Juneteenth and make it a holiday officially. That's what we need left to happen. It's for them to pass it. And it's a federal holiday, so. Yeah, I would like to get paid on that holiday um, mm -hmm. because there's another holiday that we have that people just act like, ah. look, which holiday do you want? The one where we just chill and hang out and just be cooking out and smoking? Mm -hmm. um, let's, let's be real. Um, or do you want the holiday where white people are blowing off fingers and hands every damn year? Mm -hmm. Which exactly. one sounds like a better party? Exactly. Firecrackers all damn week for no exactly. reason. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Using your stimmy for that fucking um, fireworks budget. Fuck out of here. Exactly. <laughs> and but, yeah. continue to be good to each other. Yes. Michael has a great point. Just, just do it. What's the hold up? Yeah. Stay mad, but you know, just, just make it a holiday. Yeah. I mean, Horrible. it would be better. It would be infinitely better if it was, you know, no anti lynching bill, but. I'm not, I'm not going to get my hopes up. Well, anyway. They don't want to get rid of their favorite pastime. Exactly. So, yeah. Notice I didn't say baseball. <clears throat> yeah. As we talk about strange fruit. Hmm, links. Awesome. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah. Myself. Uh, man, love your black ass skin, baby. Love the 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 different shades that we come in, whether it's Smokey Robinson to Michael Blackson. Uh -huh. Love every shade and every every iteration of it. Love your hair, whether it is bald headed <clears throat> or whether it is four C, two C, high C, I don't care, seven C's, whatever it is. I dig it all. I love it all. Be unapologetically black love your black ass if the sun is out go out in that sun don't listen to what older folk used to say and say you best have the sun you're gonna get black I'm black already what the hell you talking about grandpa <laughs> the fuck out of here stop serving food at the cookouts that give you high blood pressure and diabetes uh -huh. i mean i mean the food tastes good though i'm sorry but i mean yeah stop it but that's it love love all the kinks and curls and uh, every love it all because it's beautiful it's amazing it's what makes you who you are and we love you for it and we dig you for it yeah now go on and put all that sundress and get that shea butter working because <laughs> that's that's my personal to everybody so sir what would you rate this show, this, this Juneteenth show? Now, <laughs> on a scale of 1 to 15, because I see you keep going to 15, <laughs> and I'm not trying to have you break another scale. Dad. Go on, right. Go on, right. I know, you, I know you're going to break scale anyway, but go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Mm. I'm buying them in bulk now. He's buying them in bulk, huh? <laughs> BJ's. 
I know a guy at Staples. He got me a good deal. Let's see. The 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 spinner goes up to fifteen, and then it magically, you know, it, yeah. like in cartoon world. Yeah, that, that army, <laughs> the army shift the army. Like, <laughs> it goes outside the dial. Yeah, the <laughs> spring pops out the front. <laughs> I start seeing like steam and the gaskets and whatnot popping and everything. Straight yeah. Looney Tunes, uh, Tex Avery type mess going on, yeah. man. So, so it's obviously more than a fifteen. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> I mean, if you want to break it, yeah, we we can put a little bit on it, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, bro. Uh, since you're buying them in bulk, why not just I put mean, it to 20? Damn, Jesus. <laughs> I'm buying them in bulk, but I only got two left. Damn, brother. Better, better call up Jeff. Better call up Jeff Bezos before he goes to space. Yeah. Get that second, get that second <laughs> shipment. <laughs> Jeff ain't trying to hear me right now. <laughs> Jeff is too busy trying to per- perfect moonwalking. Yeah. Is this how you do it? No. No, it's not. No, it's not. No. So you have it official from the cinema CEO, the cinema god, on this Juneteenth episode. It's a 20. Mm-hmm. It's going to have to start being changed to June 20th. 20, June 20th. <laughs> I don't know. I'll think of the name of it. June 20th? June twentieth. Yeah, that's 20th? yeah, yeah. That sounds about right. <laughs> and yes, we are making up words. Why not? <sighs> so I mean, that's that's it. Um, Juneteenth. Enjoy the day, please. Um, be happy. Be safe. Um, take care of yourselves, and you know, um, look out for each other, and just have a good time. Don't start no fights at at the cookout. Okay. Yeah. And keep that one uncle away from everybody. Y'all know what uncle I'm talking about. Is that uncle ain't shit? I don't know why I still invite him to damn damn functions anyway. Exactly. That uncle ain't shit. He should be in jail. Yeah. Thank you once again for 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 sitting here with us, enjoying some good times. Um, we'll be back with the get back when we get back to doing what we do with the other stuff with the things. Yeah. That was cryptic. It made no goddamn sense. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All on that note, this has been Michael Williams. Yep. I have been Antonio Pomares. The Hungry Bleak. Yes. He the is Dark a cinema... Star Nevermore. That's it, baby. I, I I need to do a hashtag. I need something ridiculous. All, all the empanadas in the room. <laughs> Bro, you don't know how bad I wanted to go to Sophie's when I was in New York on Sunday, but I had no damn time. Put that impossible burger on the grill. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what? I got some impossible ground beef in there. Bet. Then I got some beans and rice too. Oh, we about to have a, we about to have a fun time now. Hmm. Um, yeah, just do the best you can with what you got because it's all that you get. All right. Um, wash your hands and lotion. That's it, folks. Yes. Have a good day. Enjoy the rest of it. Be yep. safe and. Thank you once again for watching. Absolutely. Thank you. Yep. See y'all later. Peace. Right. No awkward dancing today. No You're... We're, not, we're not doing no awkward dancing with you. <laughs> you good? <laughs> you good, mommy? You good? Not me, sir. <laughs>